The Viltrumites are one of the strongest races within the world of Invincible, and due to their tenacity for conquering planets, they developed a crazy reputation and seemingly had few rivals across the cosmos. But when it comes to finding out which one was the strongest Viltrumite, that does get a little bit complicated. Lucky for you guys though, I thoroughly analyzed the series and tried to come to a general consensus on which super durable genocide punching machine was the most powerful of them all. Although this list will be mostly comprised of Viltrumites, I may include other characters along the way. Suffice to say, there will be spoilers in this video, and please keep in mind that some of these characters are really obscure, they don't really have much, like, you know, that they show, and they don't have, like, any issues solely dedicated to them, and as such, we may have to do some speculation, but I'll try to be as concise and fair as I can within my rankings. So, without further ado, let's jump right into this. Hey fellas, if you're looking for a fun new game to grind out, I'd highly recommend checking out Raid Shadow Legends, which has dozens of characters and lots of customization options to choose from which is available on PC and mobile devices. This December, a new boss is coming to Raids that is big, malicious, and above all, powerful. Known as Hydra with six heads that will be sure to give you a challenge. One head is known as the Head of Suffering, which as its name suggests, will make your team suffer because as you damage it, it will know you, your squad, and share its pain with you. Another head is known as the Head of Torment, which will have you skip turns and lose access to your skills. Suffice to say, you'll need a good amount of strategy to take these bad boys down. What I like about the game is that it has a lot of customization options as you can mix and match artifacts that fit your playstyle as there is really no wrong way to play the game. And if the biggest, baddest boss in the entirety of mobile games isn't enough for you, there's more, as Raid's also given away a super limited edition champion known as Simple, which is available between now and January 28th, 2022, to both new and old players alike. All you have to do is log in for 7 days between now and January 28th and he's yours, but after that, he is gone. On top of that, it is the holidays, so Raid's got a full schedule of festive activities with special events and tournaments, and even some new fusion events to help you add some of Raid's incredible festive champions to your collection. Additionally, be sure to check your inbox, as new players will get an epic hero Rector Drath, 200k silver, 1 XP boost, 1 energy refill, and 1 ancient shard, so that you can summon an awesome champion as soon as you get into the game. However, this is only available within the next 30 days. You can also find me under the following username, and if you're fast, you can join up in my clan. So, what are you waiting for? Be sure to click the link in the description below or the QR code on screen to jump into the action. Now, let's get right back into the video. First on the list, and that being the weakest Viltrumite, is Oliver. Mark's half-brother, who due to his Mantis race genetics, had highly accelerated aging and despite only being a few months old, already had the appearance of a toddler. Even at such a young age, Oliver was able to curb stomp the Mauler twins who defeated the Immortal and the new Guardians of the Globe, and kicked around some evildoers that an early Mark had some trouble with. In terms of potential, he certainly had more than the average Viltrumite, but in terms of combat, he wasn't really anything special. I mean, he did receive training from Mark and his father Omni-Man, which helped him somewhat hold his own against like one Viltrumite and hit him in the balls. But generally, he was never able to contend with the big bad Viltrumites, much less severely hurt one or defeat them. He was implied to being comparable to an early Invincible, and he did manage to defeat an evil version of his brother off screen, but that is about it. In fact, he got ripped apart twice by Thrag, which isn't something to be ashamed of since nearly everyone got fucked on by Thrag, but since Oliver didn't really do anything special, he is way low on this list. Okay, so these next Viltrumites are not really far apart in terms of skill set and capability, so you could switch them around however you like, but there are some slight differences that made them stand out for me in one way or another. For sure, one of the most insanely dominant characters in the series that became one of Marx's deadliest arch nemeses came in the form of Conquest. A survivor of two calamities, that being the great purging of the weaker Viltrumites and the Scorch virus that devastated a large portion of his population. Because of his great resistance to pain and over a thousand years of experience, Mark had a lot of difficulty taking him down both times and pushed Eve to the point that she unleashed her god mode. In fact, Conquest was so deadly that even Omni-Man was scared of him, or at least considered him dangerous. Because of his old age, he had a high reputation and only feared one man, that being Thrag. 
Unfortunately, due to one of his arms being lost thanks to the virus, this crippled his fighting capabilities and lands him quite low on this list. I do think that he would rank higher if he did have both working hands, but there are some other things that made me put him this low as I'll go further into. Among Thrag's elite forces, one of his most trusted veterans was certainly Officer Craig, who eventually became a general of the Viltrumite army and was essentially his right-hand man. The reason I have him above Conquest is because of two reasons. One being that he outright defied Thrag, which is something that Conquest would never do, I mean he was really scared of him. And the other being that he was a higher rank. Now I know that rank doesn't automatically equate to power, but given how Thrag treated Craig and by how he viewed status as being affiliated with power, I interpreted it as Thrag viewing Craig in a more positive or superior sense altogether in comparison to Conquest. However, one thing that does make this difficult is that when Craig learned that Mark had killed Conquest, he questioned it. He was like, what? Like, how did, like, how did that happen, right? Which could either mean that he thought it was seemingly impossible for Mark to defeat him, or that he thought it was highly unlikely in general for Conquest to be defeated. Maybe this doesn't mean that, you know, he himself couldn't be Conquest, but it does infer that he held Conquest in a high esteem. Ultimately, I have him higher because of his humongous balls of steel to defy Thrag multiple times and actively lash out at him when he decided to spare Mark and Nolan, which is something that Conquest would not want to do. This next Viltrumite was outright savage as hell and proved to be a thorn in Mark's road, that being Anissa, a temperamental force of nature that beat the hell out of Mark in their first encounter and tried to get him to understand that he had to conquer the Earth for the Viltrumite Empire. However, as she observed the Earth, she became enamored with Mark to the point that she forced herself on him, actively overpowering him. It is a touchy subject, but Mark did say that he felt that he could have fought harder, much harder against Anissa, and implies that he didn't want to hurt her. So I won't use that as a basis for her power, but I will point out that she didn't seem repelled by Mark's punches, who at this point was much more powerful than when he had fought Conquest. I would put her above Craig because she outright had better showing, such as being able to tussle with a beefed up Alan for a bit, and slash apart to multiple elite Viltrumite hybrids in the final encounter. Which is impressive given that even just one elite was able to give Mark some trouble and bloody him. Maybe Conquest could be argued to be above her given by the fact that he survived multiple encounters with the Ragnar, while Anissa did not. But overall, I would be okay with placing her up here because, I mean, she did have a sense of ruthlessness, that other Viltrumites didn't really have. I mean, yeah, all Viltrumites wanted to rip apart their opponents, I mean, it was Mortal Kombat in that bitch. But with Anissa, I felt like she got off on it or had some sense of bloodlust that only amplified her further. I mean, look at her. She has the I will fuck you up eyes. Next up we have another Viltrumite, an older one known as Thula, who didn't hesitate at all to strike against Thetis, the leader of the Coalition of Planets and a former Viltrumite who rebelled against his empire. Granted, Thetis didn't really do anything, but she did want to throw hands against him despite knowing that he had killed their king, who was implied by Thrag as being very powerful, as he does associate status with power. Thula also managed to survive an encounter with Battle Beast alongside her squadron, and although she was unable to defeat the beefed up feline and she outright got humiliated by Thok, I think she is superior to most other Viltrumites because of her mentality and combat style. You see, she was the only one that used ranged attacks by applying blaze to her long hair, like some Rapunzel like on metal type shit, which helped her kill off multiple Viltrumite hybrids and Ragnar from a safe distance away. Generally, I felt that due to her calm nature and tactics, she was superior to the other Viltrumites that either got tilted easily, like Anissa, or decided to always go for close quarters combat, like Conquest. I also felt that she had an assassin or stealthy element to her, which I think solidifies her placement. By far, one of the most impressive Viltrumites was none other than Ursal, the elite amongst the elite Viltrumite hybrids that seemed to have a much closer relationship with Thrag than many of her siblings. And I mean, she had a lot of siblings. Ursal was highly regarded by Thrag due to her being a twin, a phenomenon which was rarely documented, if at all, in Viltrumite history. And even at a young age, she was sent out to conquer planets alongside her brother, and her training regiment consisted of fighting Ragnar which even adult Viltrumites really fear. Despite being like 5-6 to six years old, Ursal was well above Conquest and the other Viltrumites because Thrag trusted her and her brother with taking care of Mark and Adam Eve, 
even though at this point Mark had gotten much more powerful since the time that he had fought Conquest, and Thrag was confident that she would get the job done, and she nearly did so if it wasn't for Adam Eve's regeneration. As I said, even the lower ranked elites were capable of bloodying and somewhat holding their own against Mark and the pure Viltrumites that were fighting on his side. However, one thing that distinguishes Ursul from the other elites is that even though they were really powerful, they still needed to gang up on beings such as Alan and the other Viltrumites. On the other hand, Ursul wasn't about that and she fought her opponents solo. The reason Ursul is crazy is because not only was she able to hold her own against and actively overwhelm Craig by putting him in a headlock, but even while being emotionally conflicted, she was able to fend off Alan for a bit, even though by this point Alan was far stronger than in the Viltrumite war arc, where he had knocked out pre-timeskip Omni-Man and had one-shotted multiple pure Viltrumites with ease. I'd say that out of all the Viltrumites thus far, she certainly had greater potential. Now, I don't believe that she could have beaten Mark or Alan by herself, but the fact that she could hold off high-ranked Viltrumites with hundreds of times her age and experience and was given special treatment by Thrag due to her strength, makes me think that her placement is rather fair, especially when you account for the fact that she wasn't even near her full power and still had much, much more growing up to do. Of course, now we have the big bad Nolan Grayson who formerly tried to conquer the Earth and get it ready for Viltrumite control. Thanks to Mark's sentimentality and his love for his family and new home, he decided to change his ways and fight against his empire. After he abandoned his post, the Viltrumites viewed him as a traitor and sent out three Viltrumites after him, meaning that they thought two wasn't enough. And yeah, he did end up being captured, but Nolan wasn't able to fight with his full concentration, given that he was preoccupied with trying to save his Mantis wife and Mark. Nolan was so strong that multiple killing methods failed to work on him, and Craig believed that Nolan had to be bruised up by other Viltrumites in the hopes that it would facilitate his execution. Nolan was shown as being able to take on Anissa and multiple Viltrumite hybrids, but the only character that solidly beat his ass apart from Alan was Thrag, the best of the best. Although he lost to Thrag in every single one of their encounters, and I mean who didn't, in their last one, Thrag considered him to be worthy of being the ruler of the Viltrumites even though in their previous encounter, he considered his power to be laughable and not worthy of royalty. Overall, Omni-Man was a highly respected veteran and had amassed a crazy high reputation amongst the Viltrumites, so it is fair to say that his placement is quite adequate, and among all of the Viltrumites, not counting the hybrids, he should be the second strongest one at least. Yeah, yeah, Alan is not a Viltrumite, but I thought he deserved a mention given that he, like, beat the hell out of Omni-Man and he also one-shotted a bunch of Viltrumites. Uh, I will do a more in-depth video on him, but just know that Alan is, like, a damn monster like he's insane but even he was scared of the next person on our list after a thousand years of bloodshed the viltrumites efforts to creating the strongest finally came in the form of thrag the legendary viltrumite who was a master of many elements of combat and was far and wide a goddamn monster as his title was being the grand regent of the viltrumite empire it is not surprising that thrag would be high up on this list as he one-shotted thetis and blitzed him before he could even react beat the hell out of Omni-Man and Mark at the same time, and most notably, was respected and followed by all the Viltrumites, and was feared by even Conquest himself. Thrag likely scales above several Viltrumites because, I mean, he was, like, able to have a rather intense battle with Battle Beast, who was able to take on more than four Viltrumites at the same time, and he considered that to be nothing to him, but he considered Thrag to be a worthy opponent. And although both of them were severely wounded, he managed to slightly defeat him and he likely got a small boost along the way. Now, people don't really like me saying that adult Viltrumites can get stronger even after seemingly reaching their peak, but Nolan has stated that for a Viltrumite to get stronger, they have to push themselves extremely and an intense battle is one sure way to break that apparent peak. Even if you don't want to accept that Thrag got a bit more powerful at least, it doesn't matter because, I mean, he was able to rip apart Oliver twice, beat the fuck out of Omni-Man three times and kill him, rip apart Mark, and scare Alan to the point that he didn't want any beef with him. In a way, Thrag was kind of like the Jiren of the Invincible Verse, a massively powerful being that seemingly only cared about strength, and was such a huge threat that Mark not only needed a power boost, but he also needed to fight him on a star to cripple his crazy defenses, and a mech to withstand the temperatures, and even that was barely enough. Now regarding Battle Beast, I would put him around the same tier of power as Thrag, I would actually say they're really like close to each other, 
but I would give Battle Beast a slight edge with his weapons because he was already able to have a really intense battle with Thrag without his equipment, but uh, I would say they are both very, very similar. I'm confident in saying that far and wide, the strongest Viltrumite at the end of the series that we saw the most evidence for was Mark within a time skip hundreds of years into the future. And yeah, this might be a hot take given that he has no feats at the end of the series, but the reason I think this is the case is because, I mean, within a few years, before he was even considered a teenager by Viltrumite standards, he was already able to contend with and surpass Conquest and his father Omni-Man. Before that time skip though, I would say that he was for sure at least above Omni-Man, Orso, Conquest, and the other Viltrumites. Alan though, I don't think so. Uh, he did beat him later on, but of course that is post time skip. Battle Beast and Thrag, I do think he was at least decently comparable to them, but I think that they he just didn't scale to them like fully. Like they were clearly in another echelon altogether. But going by his rate of growth and by how he defeated Alan at the end, I would say that he was overall the strongest Viltrumite in the series. Most potential though, mm, he was certainly high up there, but I do believe there are other ones that had even more. Now this next section is the big question marks. The Viltrumites that I am unsure as to where to really put them because we don't really know how strong they are because we barely got to see them do anything. But I do feel like we could kind of predict how strong they could be given by, you know, the narrative of the story. First up is Thetis, the former leader of the Coalition of Planets that pretty much got wiped out by Thrag as soon as he had the chance. We didn't get to see him do anything apart from that, but narratively speaking, he was a huge deal because he did manage to kill the former King of the Viltrumites, that being Argal, through unknown means. And I mean, we don't know if he poisoned him or if he, like, straight up brawled him, but that would be impressive given that Thrag held him in a really high esteem and thought that he was really powerful and a really, you know, good leader. Other than that, we don't really have anything else to go off of. Maybe you could argue that Thrag, like, rushed at Thetis first because he perceived them to be, like, the biggest threat between him, Omni-Man, and Alan, but I think it is just as likely, if not more likely, that he just killed them first because he wanted to avenge their fallen king. I already mentioned her, but I think that Ursul has high potential given that for a hybrid, she was already elite Viltrumite level at a far younger age than Mark, and I mean, keep in mind that Mantis Viltrumite hybrids are on average weaker than pure Viltrumites or human Viltrumite hybrids, but she was unimpeded by such a biological wall. The next two are really up in the air as to which one would be stronger, but of course we have Mark's children, that being Terra, who he had with Eve, and Marcus, who he had with Anissa against his will. Marcus at a very young age was really impressive as he was already able to rampage through a city and unlock his powers at a far younger age, and in the time skip, Mark and Marcus actually fought each other, and we don't really know how the battle went down, but it seems that Mark was pressed given that, you know, they did have tattered clothes. In fact, Mark actually stated that he was proud of Marcus, and that he had surpassed him in a multitude of ways. It is fair to say that they were likely not fighting to the death or, you know, 100% all out, but it is still worthy to mention that, I mean, he was still able to give this much more powerful Mark a pretty decent battle. So maybe he would be the strongest based off of that. Regarding Terra, we have no clue if she only inherited Mark's Viltrumite genetics or also obtained some abilities from Eve, but given that there is no evidence for the latter, I won't assume anything. Theoretically speaking, she should have been able to surpass Mark at a younger age given that even while being a toddler, she managed to kick Thrag without her leg exploding. I mean, yeah, her leg got f***ed up, but it didn't outright splinter or break apart like we have seen with other beings that have tried to hit Thrag, such as Omni-Man. Generally though, I say that out of all of these, Ursul has the most potential given her impressive accolades when she was like barely 5-6 to six years old and she wasn't even near her full potential. However, if Terra and Marcus got to demonstrate more, maybe my answer would be different. And I mean, if Terra did obtain abilities from Eve, then I would be confident in saying that she would, on paper, be the strongest Viltrumite. Because, I mean, think about it. Not only would she have had the super strength, super durability, the longevity, and the super speed of a Viltrumite, but the atomic manipulation and energy projection from her mother, Eve. Anyways, what do you think of my ranking? Do you agree or disagree? And if so, please let me know as to which Viltrumite you would perceive to be the strongest one at the end of the series, and which one you think on paper had the most potential. Thanks so much for watching, please subscribe if you want to see more Invincible content, and I will catch you, Thoughties, next time. Peace out.